The United States Army once issued this hat to its soldiers. They were a standard item to the uniform and the era. Today they're out of date, and a soldier would look strange wearing one. Yes, times change, and so does our army. There's nothing old hat about its equipment or its thinking. Today's soldier is a member of a vast team that must work together. The hat or the uniform does not indicate whether the soldier is regular army, a member of the Army Reserve, or an Army National Guardsman. It signifies only that he is a soldier, part of one army, an army which is an integral part of our nation's security and well-being. To examine this growing need for one army, we need to examine our past, our present, and our future. The United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Back in the dim days of the mid-30s, the country's main concern was having fun. We were emerging from the Depression. A happy, prosperous future, free from worry, was, to quote a popular song, just around the corner. In this carefree civilian world of over two decades ago, the soldier was an outsider. The uniform, the military life, made him a breed apart. To the civilian, the soldier existed in a never-never land, a warrior without battle. Within the army itself, there were outsiders, the National Guard, the reserves, soldiers upon occasion, but essentially a part of the civilian world. To the public, they were often little more than members of a somewhat exclusive fraternity. To their own way of thinking, they were civilian soldiers. And to the unjust cynics of the regular army, they were sometimes soldiers. The false security of the world was not to last. Greedy men, ruling their lands with a spiked boot and words of hate, spawned the seeds of world disaster. Theirs was a policy of one world, their world, a hundred percent share of it. They marched and the world grew smaller and more dangerous. We were awakened from our dream just around the corner had meant running into a nightmare. Some still said, but we have two oceans protecting us. That trouble is all far away. Maybe so, but better play it safe anyway. The first number is serial number 158. This is the army, Mr. Jones. The second number, which has just been drawn, is 192. This is the Army, Mr. Green. We like the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. Do what the new bird commands. They're in the Army and out in a band. We were suddenly aware of the necessity of military life. The uniformed man no longer seemed an outsider, 
and added to the army career man, the guardsman, the reservist, was a fourth component, the civilian draftee. To the ex-civilian, the life was new and strange. Even to the guardsman, it was different from the meetings at the local armory and the relatively relaxed discipline. And to the reservist, it meant vague recollection of things he had learned long ago. Training? Oh, it was pretty rough. But there wasn't much chance of getting seriously hurt. Not with beer cans substituting for bullets. They were more apt to injure themselves in their leisure time. In their letters home, they wrote, sometimes it's kind of like a big game played by a lot of grown-up guys. But one day, one blood-stained fateful day, the opposition began playing for keeps. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. isolated nation protected by two oceans and all at once we were fighting for our very existence all over the world And it was all one army now. Guardsmen, reservist, RA, draftee, all were summed up superbly in one word, soldier. An enemy bullet didn't discriminate. It was all together now, or not at all. These gallant men made the army unified at last. Some made it so the hard way. But once we were unified, once we were one army, there was no stopping us. We showed them that as a single, hard-working, hard-fighting team, we too could play for keeps.
With the job well done, the majority of the team heard the call of civilian life and home. But there were quite a few who had become attached to the Army, who found military life to their liking. They stayed in. And with the coming of peace, there was time for relaxation after a hard day's work. Time for the great American pastime. And there were some who were torn between two choices. They wanted to soldier, but the lure of civilian life was also mighty strong. The National Guard seemed to be the answer. Still others desired to keep their army ratings and also be a part of a cherished tradition. They joined active and inactive army reserve units. And thus, the situation became almost as it was before the war. Three separate army components, again knowing little about each other. The war had brought them into contact, but now the division was once more evident. We had finished the war to end all wars, but had we? From a godless land, dominating one quarter of the Earth's surface, there came ominous rumblings. Resentment against the free world was stirred up in their homeland and elsewhere. Once again, the world had the jitters. No more talk here of two big oceans separating us from our potential enemies. Not in the age of the long-range bomber and the super weapon. To protect ourselves, we had to protect weaker, less fortunate nations, ill-equipped to withstand the onslaught of propaganda, sabotage, chicanery, and deceit. Korea, a primitive, obscure little country. We didn't know much about it, but after June 25, 1950, we were to know a lot more. The seeds of destruction, dissension, and hate sown in other lands blossomed here. Korea became the center of the world's attention. At the UN, lights burned brightly into the night as the debate went on. In Washington, there wasn't time for debate. A friendly nation had been attacked. We moved fast. The president committed US forces to action. Here were the reserves. Once again, active duty. Five years wasn't too long to forget. Men of the National Guard and the Reserves, who had been in before, remembered their lessons well. Nevertheless, it wasn't easy. This was a new kind of enemy, perhaps more formidable, more ruthless than before. Guardsmen, RA. Once again, it didn't matter. It's all one army when the heat's on. You do your best and get it over with. Never mind what outfit the other guy came from. You're in trouble together, and you help each other. this kind of fight, you had to work together and endure hardships together. Guard, reserve, RA, they all meant soldier. How about it, Mac? You from a guard outfit? And you, maybe you're RA or perhaps a reservist. Well, over here, there isn't much time to discuss respective merits. There's a job to be done all together. 
And then came the conference table and a new kind of combat. Now, the arguments, proposals, counterproposals, more arguments. Men's lives hinged on a sheet of paper. Finally, it came, a truce. The big job was done. We packed up and said goodbye to the land we never quite understood. So long to the men who remained to carry on. Farewell to those who would never come back. We learned the bitter truth. There is a continuing constant threat of aggression, both physical and psychological, hovering over the free world. We dare not become soft or lazy or careless or apathetic. We're in a hard race. The stakes are high. We know they're good. We must be better. Today's army must fill and maintain maximum requirements. It needs first-class men ready for any emergency, not only in the event of war, but in the fight for peace. The Army must keep abreast of the most recent technological developments in a rapidly changing world, and constantly strive for the most modern military system. One of the most important factors in a modern army is the ability to function as a team. It did so in wartime. It is now imperative that it do so in peacetime as well. The key phrase today is one army. This concept comprises the three army components. The Army Reserve. The regular or active army. and the Army National Guard. The Army Reserve is one of the main sources of extra strength. In the event of an emergency, men of the Army Reserve, the reserve units themselves, can be rapidly called to active duty to support the active army. For example, during summer training in a field exercise called Operation Ready Freddy, units of the Army Reserve were integrated speedily and smoothly with units of the regular Army. Reservists took over and maintained the duties of active Army personnel. The experiment was a complete success and is due to be repeated. Another vital part of the reserve program is the ROTC, the Reserve Officers Training Corps. The classroom is the starting place for future leaders of the country. Under today's ROTC program, the student can become an important part of America's strength in reserve. Under supervision of Army instructors, today's youth can ensure the country's future and benefit himself in many ways at the same time. The Army Reserve offers modern training, a chance to use brain as well as brawn. It develops the quality of leadership while allowing the reservist opportunity to engage in normal civilian pursuits. He is offered the benefits of the finest specialized technical training and opportunities for advancement. He will make friends with similar backgrounds and interests. 
Above all, reserve training provides ample opportunity to be a good citizen and an important one. The strength and readiness of the U.S. Army Reserve Divisions are the highest in history. With all his skills and preparedness, the reservist is of utmost value to our nation's defense and security. Of the three components that make up today's army, the history of the National Guard is the oldest. As the militia, it was formed over 300 years ago to withstand Indian attacks. Therefore, it has been in existence longer than our country. Made up entirely of volunteers, it is the only non-regular military force provided for in the Constitution. Army National Guard has served with distinction and courage from the early Indian skirmishes through World Wars I, II, and Korea. Although officially under the jurisdiction of individual states, the Guard is federalized in time of war. In peacetime, Today's Guard has many duties and responsibilities. When disaster strikes, the Guard can be counted on to give its best. There are 400,000 officers and men in the Army National Guard throughout the United States and Puerto Rico. It is comprised of 21 infantry divisions, six armored divisions, and hundreds of other combat and support units. Guard training is carried out under supervision of the active Army. New enlistees without prior military service are required to take six months active duty training. Today's Army National Guard has also reached the highest degree of readiness in peacetime history. No matter where, they are ready. You'll find them in sunny climes like Hawaii, or in our outpost state of Alaska. No matter where, the men of the Army National Guard are trained, modernized, and aware of their vital mission. And in keeping with today's one army concept, the Guard is equipped to maintain important military installations. Fortunately, this alert is only practice. But in the event of enemy attack, the services of the Army National Guard will be invaluable. Its disciplined, trained personnel are organized and equipped to aid devastated areas and expedite both civilian and military recovery. Truly, 
the Army National Guard is an indispensable part of today's One Army. In Washington, a recent conference was called by Secretary of the Army Wilbur Brucker. Attended by senior commanders of the various Army components, ideas and recommendations were put forth to draw the three components closer together into one fighting force of top effectiveness. Said Secretary Brucker, the unfolding of the Cold War has posed a common peril, which has brought us closer together in the realization that we are, in fact, in the front lines of a new and perilous conflict which may last for years to come. Therefore, it is important that the public recognize and understand the status of the National Guard and the Army Reserve, not separate and distinct forces, but rather integrated components of one army. I wish to make it clear that no thought is being given to dispensing with our present army system. Many of our active army, Army National Guard, and Army Reserve units are heirs to a gallant tradition of service to the nation. Nothing will be done to weaken or destroy these invaluable sources of pride and spirit. There is, however, an urgent necessity to increase confidence and mutual trust among all components and branches of the Army, and thus present the single image of the soldier, regardless of the component in which he serves. End of quote. With one Army ever ready, America will continue to be the leader of free men in the hearts and hopes of all the people of the world. <laughs>